Hello and thanks for tuning in to watch this video tutorial on how to create virtual machines uh, from your forensic disk images using OS Forensics. Now this is great for things like courtroom presentation, presenting evidence to non-technical uh, audience, you know, maybe a deeper analysis of the system, deeper analysis of certain applications and things like that. Uh, a quick little background on the tool and the company, Passmark Software, you know, has been around uh, since about 1998. Uh, we are headquartered out of Sydney, Australia, and our U.S. entity is out in Redwood City, California. Uh, the OS Forensics project began actually back in around 2012 and uh, really over the last five years has become um, just one of the top computer forensic toolkits worldwide. Our software library outside of just OS Forensics, we have some other tools. We have some free tools that you can use uh, in the forensics space such as Volatility Workbench, which is our front end GUI for the popular open source memory forensics toolkit volatility. We have a very advanced and feature rich um, mounting tool called OSF mount, um, which has been completely redesigned. It's I think we're on to version three. Um, it was redesigned really to do and perform a lot of the automated features that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and then we have Image USB, OSF Clone. Uh, those are also available for free on our website. And then the uh, main website, the passmark.com site, you can check out some of our other tools like Burn and Test, Performance Test, Wireless Mon, etc. So uh, our OS Forensics Computer Forensics Toolkit is like I said, has really come a long way in the last five years. Uh, you know, our software and our training has been sought after and trusted by some of the top law enforcement, um, military, corporate 500 companies, educational institutes, etc. And every year our customer base just continues to expand exponentially, mostly in part due to word of mouth advertising from our core user base. So I'm going to show you how to accomplish creating and booting a virtual machine automatically from your forensic image um, and as well as look at that how you could do that maybe from a manual standpoint um, but really talk about the advantages of using a tool like OS Forensics to perform this task versus the headache and the time consuming task it can be uh, to perform this in a manual way. So here's just kind of some of the features within the OS Forensics Toolkit. It really is a complete, universal, feature-rich computer forensic and live analysis toolkit. So for those of you a little unfamiliar with OS Forensics who maybe stumbled across this video, uh, we literally do, uh, you know, we cover um, the whole spectrum of computer forensics whether that's disk imaging to password extraction, file decryption, registry analysis, user activity analysis, I mean, you name it. I mean, we've got a tool in the toolkit for that. And then as well as you can, you know, you can use this on live systems out in the field because we allow you to install it to a USB. Same exact features, same exact functionality same exact user interface uh, it just has the ability to install to a USB and then you're all uh, able to use that uh, as a portable tool as well so very very useful tool and other elements not just about what we're going to be talking about today specifically today though we will uh, talking about this the forensic image virtual boot feature uh, or the forensic uh, image virtual environment feature, whatever you want to call it. And then again, uh, just, you know, we've highlighted OSF mount, which is a free tool. It's doing a lot of the kind of heavy lifting in the background, as we'll take a little closer look at in a minute. So in a nutshell, one of the main reasons, you know, we want to start performing this type of examination 
on your evidence is that there is literally no better way to see the evidence than through the eyes of your suspect. So imagine that for a minute. You know, we've all wished we could simply just power on that evidentiary computer, that evidence computer. You know, simply just boot up into the bad guy's account and just locate all of your evidence in that simple, familiar Windows environment. And now, well, that is sort of a possibility uh, by doing just this creating a virtual machine from the disk image and booting that uh, in your um, virtual machine software of choice. So why do we do this? So when performing a forensics investigation on an image of the system disk, it could be necessary to recreate and examine the live environment of that system by booting the image on a virtual machine. So by running a live system, the investigator can perform a live analysis of the image, allowing for the potential discovery of additional forensic artifacts that may not have been previously uncovered from a traditional static analysis. And finally, because the system is running in a protected virtual environment, there's obviously no risk of compromising the, initial, the original evidence uh, or you know, the host system itself. And so, some of these advantages again why we want to do this we're going to get a deeper analysis of a desktop of the desktop of certain applications and files that we can't get any other way we can't get through our you know forensics tools we're going to be able to view applications running uh, in, in in that native environment or even files within the applications you know within that native environment we're going to talk about you know why this is great for courtroom presentation so when you're trying to present evidence or technical artifacts and things and, and words or terms that uh, the non-technical audience may not be used to having you know the old saying a picture's worth a thousand words is really true when it comes to trying to present technical um, evidence in items into a court of law in front of a judge in front of juries etc and then also another great benefit that we've added is that we will also support additional disk images from multi-disk systems so say you've got you've seized a computer you've got the operating di the operating system disk then maybe there's a couple more internal disk atta you know attached drives we can also bring in those additional disk images to, re to really um, completely recreate that environment. So looking you know, from a manual standpoint, again, you're basically needing to convert a forensic image to virtual machine disk format. And you're gonna have several third-party tools out there um, you are going to need to convert your disk image to a raw format. So if you are one of those that you know you, uh, it's in uh, AFF or EO1 or you know one of the many different disk imaging formats, you're going to have to do a disk conversion. So if you needed to do that, you can use OS Forensics to do simple disk image uh, format conversion. So you would just simply point, as you can see here, the source disk. Um, is going to be your disk image file and then you can just rewrite a new target image file out and you would just choose to make that in an IMG or raw format so you've converted a uh, you know you got to convert then the raw forensic image to a virtual machine disk format at that point so now say you've converted a disk image from EO1 to in raw IMG, now you're going to convert the IMG to VMDK, VHD, VDI, etc. You'll then need to create a new virtual machine instance from that converted virtual machine disk. And then there are, you know, here's a look at several third party tools that you uh, can take a look at um, that will help you perform this kind of manually with, with several other tools. Here's a, a few other example uh, scripts for these particular tools. 
some other third-party tools for booting a disk image on a virtual machine and some tools for converting virtual disk to another virtual disk format but let's look at the advantages of using OS Forensics to simply basically do this in a one-click type of operation I'm not having to source numerous diff different uh, tools or Linux uh, Linux tools and different things I'm not going to spend hours doing image conversions and different stuff like that I can go ahead and use my E01 or my split images or VMDK you know etc so we're going to support a wide range of image formats there's no third-party image mounting software to purchase uh, so that's another advantage and again OSF mount is included it is a standalone tool but it's also included as part of that OS forensics toolkit and and gets installed so there's no need to worry about another mounting software at that point another interesting fact we also support Windows in Mac so if you know we can do this not just with the Windows disk image but also a good majority of many of the Mac OS X um, versions as well and actually you won't find it mentioned probably in documentation but we do support actually even some Linux uh, dist popular distros as well so you may your mileage may vary but uh, it very well can work for you for a Linux disk as well uh, also just another thing to note you know backing up here you know maybe some of you do 95 percent Windows forensic investigations and you're not familiar too much with maybe the Mac or Linux type of a file system and so looking at that in just a tree pane type of a view in your forensic uh, software or something like that you know maybe um, maybe it's helpful to be able to go out and look at this just kind of natively and find some evidence uh, you know this way as well we also support partition images by prepending an MBR image to the disk in the VMDK file so which this is normally impossible to boot a bare partition uh, but so if you do don't if you do have an image file that's a partition image versus a full disk image uh, we will be able to support that as well and rest assured all disk writes within that virtual machine are being stored out into a separate a separate uh, delta cache file which is preserving the integrity of the disk image file and then we will, because of that you have the options to also save and restore the disk image from the previous boot state or you can simply ignore it and choose to just you know subsequent um, boots will be back using the original disk image so several options there you can also check to disable the automatic disk checkup uh, on on boot due to a dirty file system so this is something that can occur if the disk image was uh, acquired before the system was properly shut down so many times in maybe a law enforcement setup where someone had just went in on a search warrant or seizing the evidence maybe they pulled the plug out of the wall on a workstation and Windows didn't get a chance to go through its normal shutdown process and um, you know maybe it was imaged in that state and so every time you go to boot it in this type of scenario environment it's going to want to go through that automatic disk checkup so we give you the nice ability to do bypass that from the get-go as well okay so here's a look for those of you who have not seen OS forensics before this is our start screen so once you launch OS forensics this is what you uh, your, your first look at it will be you have the workflow over on the left and then all of our kind of main st start screen icons and features there uh, in the center of the page you can get to this feature the boot virtual machine from either the workflow or from click double clicking the icon in the start menu once you do that you will be taken to the boot virtual machine module as shown here and then it's really you know it's probably going to sound more complicated just walking through and talking about these options and what it really is at this point it, it's literally just a point to your forensic image file review kind of just some um, standard options there and you're clicking start but 
let's walk through this just so there's no um, no one gets off track here so we're just going to point out to your image file so you can see here I've got a split EO1 image file a disk image and I'm just going to point to that first EO1 file OS Forensics is then going to determine what operating system or systems uh, are present on that disk image so let's say maybe you got an image of a MacBook Pro that has a uh, Windows Boot Camp partition with Windows on it you would then see both the OS X um, option as well as you know whatever Windows um, operating system was installed as well here so you would choose the appropriate operating system you want to boot into if more than one you will then need to choose your hypervisor or your virtual machine software so we will support either Oracle's free virtual box or VMware's workstation now you will need to have one of these or both installed on your system before trying to perform this or it will not work so you this does not one of these do not get installed with OS forensic so um, for those of you not using one presently the Oracle's free virtual box is a fantastic tool um, you can go out and get that for free from Oracle's website here are some user different user defined settings uh, most of the time you will probably just want to leave those as default however you can um, change those up depending on the scenario if you wish here is where I talked earlier about bringing in additional disk images from a multi-disk system. So if you have a system where you've uh, you've got additional maybe storage devices, things like that. You can bring those in, attach those additional disks through this um, portion of the uh, wizard here. Next, you'll just want to review um, the Windows are the you know user accounts that are available to be booted into and make the correct appropriate choice from the drop down menu you can also see there check marked is the disable automatic disk checkup which we spoke about a minute ago and there's another option here we did not discuss yet which is the automatic login with account so another great reason why we want to do this is you know a good majority of the time users will not have access maybe to the the user account password and so check marking that will give you the ability and the tool is going to go out and try to um, spoof or bypass that that Windows user account password so that you can just boot straight into that um, to that user account without having to actually enter in a physical password and uh, mileage may vary depending on uh, which versions of Windows 10 you may encounter um, but a, probably a good majority of what you will encounter uh, should be supported and then finally you have that, that last box that says save virtual machine to case it just gives you the option to save this to your case directory uh, if you are working a full forensic case uh, within OS forensics so that's it um, once you click the boot VM button there at the bottom the process will begin in that log window above will record all the processes that are going on behind the scenes and so that log can then after the operation is complete can be manually reviewed um, or even copied out and you know pasted out somewhere if you need to to store that and so here is probably you know like I said earlier a picture is worth a thousand words you know that saying uh, here's a great way of you know showing you why it's you know a good advantage of using OS forensics to do this automatically but here is all the steps that are going through um, you know going through the process behind the scenes here this is all all those steps that are taking place so if you need to audit this and look at this uh, you have that ability to do so so once it's completed you should now see the virtual machine in the VM dashboard tab uh, it's located it's that last tab there next to the boot existing VM tab 
and then you will notice too that you're selected so say if you you used VirtualBox you'll notice once uh, it's been complete that you'll see that you don't even have to open VirtualBox yourself. This it's all hands off, and uh, you know your virtual machine software will open up, and hopefully when you um, maximize it out to to view, you will be logging into that user account as we can see here. So you may be asking, okay, well is this you know is this better than my forensics report? No, it's not necessarily better and it's not at all. We're not talking about doing this to replace a forensics report, but rather it is an incredible supplement to your you know, vendor report. Uh, you can bring you know, literally your testimony to life with visual aids for a judge, jury, attorneys, um, maybe a corporate boss, corporate team, C-suite, you know, etc., a client that's hired you to do something. It's just a fantastic way to provide those visual aids. Um, we've talked about that several times. So, you know, there's just really no better way to present technical evidence to a non-technical audience than how it was seen through the eyes of, you know, the user. So some examples. Jump list artifacts, for instance. Here we can see recently played videos. Um, through VLC Media Player. So like I said before, one of the main advantages to analyzing a system this way is that you can view much of the data and evidence in those native applications. And it's also a very good way at helping to explain the artifacts you included in your report to that non-technical audience. So things, you know, like we see here, jump list or you know MRUs you know most recently used uh, or different registry keys we may talk about prefetch file etc cetera, etc cetera. they can all be confusing for those not involved in this type of work uh, so being able to provide a visual aid to all that is you know it's just priceless and so here we see that great example of how we can show a jumpless artifact by simply right clicking on the applications pinned to the taskbar and again, in this you know example, we see we would be able to show a recently a, you know a list of recently played videos uh, files that have been played with that VLC <clears throat> media player um, application. Here we can see the most visited and recently closed websites from the Chrome web browser by simply right clicking on its icon. In this example, we see some frequently opened folders from the Windows Explorer. And this slide shows you um, how you could view and record recently opened Word documents. So taking maybe a step further, not just right clicking, but actually opening some of these, you know, here we've just opening some web browsers can also provide potentially valuable information and visual aids for your investigation. So here we see numerous website tabs that were saved by the user to be opened each time the browser is launched. Here we've opened Firefox and can see information such as most frequented websites. Can be a great piece of evidence depending on the case. Here's another good example of information you can typically only get you know by viewing the applications running in their native environment so in this example we can see C cleaner settings and see several notable findings here potentially we can see it was set to run when the computer starts we can see um, the that secure file deletion was enabled and that the program was set to wipe free space of the system drive so information like this might help explain why you weren't able to recover that much deleted data from a system maybe you know so um, if you could s uh, find a prefetch file showing that CCleaner was ran two days or one day before you seized the system and there's a good chance by looking at these setting settings that it wiped the free space on that system and there was 75 80 gigs of free space on the system disk but when you carved it didn't produce much results here's maybe a good way that you can explain 
why you weren't finding anything. For those working peer-to-peer -peer investigations, you could use this method to acquire some really um, important artifacts such as search term history from uh, a lot of the peer-to-peer -peer applications. So this data is typically not really handy or use or easy to recover using traditional computer forensics tools or accessible from uh, registry artifacts as they were several years ago. So this is a real quick, simple, easy way to show that search history in a lot of these applications. You could also potentially use it to just showcase files that were simply maybe hidden by the user or provide some sort of a visual aid, you know, if you needed to that um, to just to kind of show um, show a judge or jury how simple and easy it is to hide um, and access hidden files or folders. The boot virtual machine features it also it's a great way to view recycle bin data in Windows Explorer just as you would if you were um, the user who sent them there. So this allows you to see those original file names original file path and the, the the date deleted all that information and so you're not just seeing the dollar r the dollar i rename files as presented uh, in some of the forensics tools so you could even use this to show how quick and easily a user could delete then access and restore those files as well here's another just kind of a random example of information you could get using this process that you wouldn't normally obtained through a traditional forensic analysis using your traditional forensic software. So case in point you could see where a user you could see a user specified image that had been previously set as a desktop background. Last but not least we'll look at here um, and, and perhaps one of the maybe the biggest benefits to being able to uh, is to be able to uh, view and analyze the system in that live environment is that you can analyze and search email and attachments in their native application. So really if you think about it, what better way to search a suspect's PST than through their the Outlook, the native Outlook application. You know, perform keyword searching, uh, go to the inbox, outbox, deleted bins, finding calendar appointments, look at the contacts, task list, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, a great way you know to go through review attachments um, the list of examples literally can just kind of go on and on here so obtaining additional information and being able to perform deeper analysis of certain applications is just one of the uh, the benefits of the feature however you will need to find a way to capture and include those visuals in your case report and so thankfully there are several feature rich free and even open source screen capturing tools that you can utilize to accomplish this and also thankfully OS Forensics has the built-in functionality to work alongside with them um, and so a few you know Greenshot um, and ShareX are probably two of the more popular um, screen capturing solutions so, um, you might want to look at a tool also by TechSmith that's called Camtasia if you were interested in doing any video um, recording as well. And then there's also the snipping tool that's included in your Windows installation for basic screen capturing needs. And the snipping tool I believe will, will be is getting ready to be renamed to the snip and sketch. So maybe depending on when you're viewing this video it may, may be called the snip and sketch feature. Uh, and I believe it's going to showcase quite a few additional features in the future Windows 10 updates. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And also, the, also uh, for those of you who will use VirtualBox as your VM software, there is a screenshot feature built into the software, um, into the VirtualBox application. So all of those solutions can, uh, you know, help you to record and report those things uh, that you're able to see from the virtual um, machine instance. So here's just a quick look at the green shot, op green shot options. Uh, it runs can run in the system tray and 
um, you can actually automatically or you can configure it to automatically copy screen captures directly to your clipboard with keyboard shortcuts so if you're doing 50 100 plus you know screenshots and adding those into your case in OS forensics this is going to save you a lot of time so you can set that up to do keyboard shortcuttings to create the the screenshot and automatically copy that to the clipboard then within OS forensics in the manage case module all you have to do is simply click on the clipboard data button here uh, which is in the manage case module and it's going to just that's a one click operation there then so and especially those of you working on a dual monitor system you know that's a it's a great way um, to have OS forensics open on one monitor your virtual machine showing on the other and I would simply just go through my list of bookmarked evidence in my forensics you know case all those artifacts and I would just go through um, and locate those in the virtual machine and screen capture it and then go back to my other monitor and do my one click um, addition by clicking on that clipboard data and it just will automatically dump that screenshot as a uh, item now in my case so very very handy feature there um, VirtualBox we spoke of earlier here's just you know you can go out and get that at virtualbox.org um, and you can download that for free at any time and like I said uh, for those of you using VirtualBox um, it you know clicking there on the view tab you can even take screen capturing um, it has those features built in to the tool itself actually so Thank you very much again for your time and for watching this video tutorial on OS Forensics by Passmark Software. Be sure and email us today for a free, no obligation trial of OS Forensics or for a quote. Shoot us an email at info at passmark.com. Visit us on the web at www.osforensics.com. Thanks. <music>